All right, we got the live button and uh, we're going to get started tonight. Uh, this is our Wednesday night and I uh, really think that uh, I've heard so many people talking about how they're just kind of losing heart. But I want to deal with the subject is do not lose heart. And uh, just a quick reminder of our website at lyitl.org. That's abbreviated for lovingthelord.org. That is our outreach ministry of our church here, and that's also our website address. So get a chance, go there, look it over. If, if there's something on there that touches you, or maybe you felt led to send something on, pass it on to a friend, it, our website is a ministering website, and we want to minister, so we need your help. How? We need you to go ahead and, and like our videos and share those videos uh, to those that you know, might not attend. And it might be a blessing to them. So once again, pray for our ministry. Pray that God continues to bless as he does in these crazy times. Uh, once again, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 3. Do not lose heart. And so Paul addresses here uh, in verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God, notice the small letter G, the God of this world or this age has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Now underline this. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Underline that, the image of God. And I'll talk to you about that as we go farther. Verse 5. For we preach not, ourselves but what does he say but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants what for f-o-r for Jesus sake all right for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God now that's important and he says here, here's what he's done uh, even though we're going through trying times up and down uh, with sometimes even your own faith. And I'll tell you why that's happening, all right? But he says, he, he, um, for God, in verse 6, commanded the light to shine out of the darkness and shine in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of what? The glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthly vessel. Now circle earthly vessels. Now beside it write the term clay. Clay. Uh, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You know so often we kind of elevate ourselves uh, to a level that we forget that we're just earthly vessels created by God. And that we will all one day die. Alright. So verse number 8. Paul says we are troubled on every side. And he says, yet not distressed. Now, I want you to think about this, the physical and the spiritual and the mental here. He says, for we are troubled on every side. Physical. Yet not distressed. Mental, spiritual. But we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. So that word destroyed, we'll come back to that. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus with the life also of Jesus might be made manifest or visible in our body. For we which uh, live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest or visible in our mortal flesh. Then, uh, so then death works in us but life in you. Now I want you to circle that whole phrase. What does he mean that death uh, uh, worketh in us, but life in you? I'll give you a jump start. Remember that earthly vessel we talked about, that clay? In us, we are dying every day. A little bit of us dies every day. Over time, we will eventually die because we're just earth to earth, you know, dust to dust. Okay, but he says, but because Christ is in you, we're able to what? To have life. Even though our body will only produce death in the long run, Christ will pr produce life even through the life that we have now. So verse 13, we have the same Holy Spirit 
of faith. Now circle that. We have the same Holy Spirit of faith according as it is written. And he says, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So we're talking about do not lose heart. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And now we're down to verse number 14. And he says, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus. Now that's important. Remember, we went back and we talked about the earthly vessel, you know, the clay vessel that it's going to one day die. All right. But he says, but there's going to come a day that God's going to what? Raise us up. All right. Verse 15, for all things are for your sake. That's important. And the abundant grace might through, listen, through what? The thanksgiving of many redound. That word redound in, in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 15, means to contribute to. To contribute to. So we're talking about do not lose heart. And yet, even though our flesh, uh, we get tired and weary, and we're going to talk about that. But how can we as Christians, uh, from a spiritual standpoint, not lose faith? Let's go back to verse 15. He says this, for all things are for your sakes. Put out Romans 8, 28 out beside that. That the abundant grace, not just a little, but the abundant grace, everything you need in Christ is going to help you. He says that it might through the thanksgiving of many, look at this, redound or contribute to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. Now that's where the text is coming from. We faint not. We do not lose heart. All right. So put do not lose heart out beside that in verse number 16. But through our, it, it, I'm sorry, and, uh, but though our outward man perish. Remember that clay vessel I talked to you about a while ago? Remember how Paul said that we're dying daily? He says, yet the inward man, this is the key, the inward man is renewed. Notice this, Lady Karen, day by day. And that's where most of us are failing. We're not taking time to renew the inner man. He says, for our light, in verse 17, affliction, our what? Our light, affliction. What do you mean light? Do you have any idea what I'm going through? Do you know what I'm experiencing? I mean, how can you call it light? Compared to eternity, compared to what we're going to be living in and with in eternity, all the things we're going through here, they'll be considered light or, or meaningless because of the majesty of God's presence when we're on the other side. So he says, but right now, for our light affliction, which is but for a, circle that, moment. We need to remember that every day is a new day, a new start. And what we're going through, it's just for a moment in time. Look how many things that, uh, uh, Lady Karen, that you and I have been through. And there were some ups and downs. We've had some things that really come against us from time to time. But those were just moments that, they, they're, they're gone. And uh, we've had people that have literally almost assaulted us from time to time. But what'd you do? It was a moment. We don't bring that back into the now. What do you do? You let it go, right? Because everything you're going through is just temporary. It's for the moment. And he, look what he says. Look in verse 17. It worketh for us. What? You mean all that stuff I'm going through and I'm going through now is working for me? He says, it works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Now, I said this last week, and I'll say it again. I've, I've preached it for years. God is more concerned with who you are becoming and who you are going to reflect than what you're going through. Okay? So the whole idea is that you and I would be able to take and reflect Christ in our life. You know, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are, in verse 18, that are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporal or temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So here's the deal. I, I'm sure that nobody is joined on here or just came here tonight, uh, coming and uh, today hoping and praying and longing that somebody would, would, would strip all their hope away. Nobody came here for that. Uh, uh, did anyone come here hoping to be discouraged? No. Did anyone come here today hoping that someone would, would knock all the wind out of their sails? No. Nobody came here today for that. Why? Nobody is saying, please hurt me. 
Uh, nobody's saying, please strip away all my motivation to serve the Lord. Please discourage me. Please defeat me. Uh, we came here looking for just the opposite, didn't we? So we came here looking for encouragement. We're seeking hope, de desiring to be motivated to the greater things that are in the Lord, things you can't see. And, and we're going to learn about that. Uh, we, we, uh, you have to understand, we came here looking for help. That's why you've, you've joined us today. That's why we've opened our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 18. If I told you there was a secret that would allow you to have hope in this world, would you want to know what it was? I believe the answer would be yes. If there was a secret, uh, in spite of your hopelessness and your discouragement, and I told you that every day that you could take, and it's kind of like my, my phone. Uh, at night, I have to plug that in every day. And when I go to sleep, and then I wake up, next, that battery's charged. And throughout the day, I've used my phone a lot. I noticed the battery. In fact, I was going to preach tonight. I only had about 2%, so I had to plug it in so I could preach the message tonight. I had to be aware that my battery was being what? Drained. And you've got to understand that what we're going through in life, that your spiritual battery is being drained. That inward man is being drained, but it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, in verse 16, Paul said, he said, for which cause we faint not, or literally, we do not lose heart. Paul knows the secret to not losing heart. And he shares that secret with us in these passages tonight. So I want to spend a little bit of time on these verses that we just read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 18. I want to preach on the thought, do not lose heart, all right? And I want to show you these truths. So first of all, in verse 16, number one, that's an incredible statement. Paul says, for which cause, he says what? We faint not. That means we're not going to allow our heart to fail. Well, we're talking about the spiritual heart. And so here we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 through 18. Don't lose heart. Paul said, I'm going to share with you some, some secrets. Because if you don't charge that spiritual battery every day, then it's going to get drained. And then, yes, you could lose heart. Heart. But Paul says, I found this secret how not to lose heart. I found this secret how to stay charged on the inside, even though the outside, this old man is dying, right? So uh, it can be easy to lose heart. Would you agree with that? It only takes somebody to say something negative or uh, somebody sent you a text the other day. And it's like, what would you do? Just delete it. Right? But don't let those little things take away the breath out of you. So what does he say? He says, we faint not. That was a decision that he made. It was an act of voice coming from the inside. Now, he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8, For we would not, brethren, have you to be ignorant, that means unlearned, of our trouble. Did you get that? That came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure. Now, listen to what Paul says. He says, we were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. So Paul's very aware that the outside things that happen to us uh, physically, it can get you to a point to where you just feel totally, totally, completely pressed out, where there's nothing left. Uh, my wife and I were talking about the other day, we spend our, our whole day taking care of everybody and doing everything for everyone. And when we get home, we're too exhausted and then we don't have a whole lot left to give to each other. So we have to fix that. What do we do? There's times that we have to take and schedule time for us. Now, it's important you understand what I just said. If you're getting to the point where you're losing heart, you need to schedule some time away from everything else so you can focus on you so you don't lose heart. In fact, he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 29, he says, and, 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 that, and the ministers of Christ, he says, I speak as a fool, I am more in labors, more abundant in stripes, above measure, in prison, more frequent, uh, in death often, and deaths often, uh, of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. They beat him. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice or three times I suffered a shipwreck. And night and day I've been in the deep. And, 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 and the journeys often in perils of waters, 
in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen. Now, let me stop right now. If I read, if I heard Paul say that, number one, I don't want to hang around this guy. You know, it, it, I think he's bad news, right? But no, he's living for the Lord. So here's Paul. He's not one of these guys, these Christians says, oh, I'm going to buy somebody's book and God wants to bless me. God wants to take care of me. God's going to give me all. The Listen, Paul says he's living for God. Let's, let's continue this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 29. I've been in the deep. And the, and the journeys often in perils of waters, perils of robbers, and perils of my own countrymen, uh, and the perils of the heathen, and the perils of the city, and the perils of the wilderness, and the perils of the sea, and the perishing among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, and watching often in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without. That which cometh upon me daily, the care of other churches, who is weak, and I am not weak, who is offended, and he says, and I burn not. So what's he saying? He said, I've got a secret. He said, I've had all this to happen to me. But because he knew the secret of renewing the inner man every day. Listen, some of you say, well, hey, I'm going to try to go to church Sunday. Oh, listen, this is not about going to a church. This is about you understanding that you are the creation of God. He's your creator and that you have to recharge that spiritual side of you. And it must be done day to day. And people say, well, I just don't have time. Well, then you're going to go through what you go through alone. But I'm telling you, Paul says there's a secret. We all stumble from discouragement. And uh, we go from discouragement to what? discouragement a lot of times we all quit from time to time uh, we all want to just stop and give in and, and, and give up and say no more because you see we, we feel like we've already given everything we've got left there's just nothing at the end of the day to give even to ourselves or even to our mates so most of us like David said in Psalms 55 verse 6 and I said all oh, that I had Wings like a dove, and then would I fly away and be at rest. My wife and I went fishing today. We caught nothing but a bunch of cold air. But we got some uh, little sun out there when there's all these ducks flying in and around. And I mean, there's a lot of them. And my wife said, you know what? I, I wouldn't mind if I could be a bird. I, I, I said, well, be, if you're going to be a bird, be a big old huge eagle, right? And everything. So that made me think of Psalms 55 verse 6. When David said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, that I would fly away and just be at rest. I just want to escape. Can anybody identify with that? You see, if we'd be honest, we'd all have to admit that we would like to do that from time. Sprout some wings and fly far, far away from our tribulations and our troubles and our trials. And, and, and I've been there. There's some, sometimes I just want to get in the car and go for a ride and not come back for about five hours. You ever been there? Of course we have. And I believe that, that uh, Paul says, I'm, I'm far more interested in reaching a place in his life. He says that I faint not, that I don't lose heart. And I believe that's an incredible uh, statement right there for the child of God. And secondly, I think it's a familiar struggle. We all want to take and be strong in the Lord, but we all struggle. It's familiar, you know. And he talks about in verse 16, though our outward man perish, perish, the outward man, the fleshly part of us, we perish. The results of an aging body and the sin uh, in the mind conspire to strip away our joy. Our joy perishes. To strip away our hope, our hope perishes. To, uh, to, for peace of mind, you see this old body wears out and, and and be honest with you, the outer body, as you get older, somebody said, man, when you get old, I was talking to Lady Karen's brother, and he said, you know, when you get older, it just kind of goes like this. I said, no, it goes like this, <laughs> you know, for some people. So what I'm trying to say is the, every day I'm reminded that the outer body is not what it used to be, that I am perishing every day. My days are numbered and so are yours, right? In Luke chapter 12, verse 33, he says, sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupteth. So that word corrupt is the same word that is translated in 
perish in our text. So like moths can destroy the clothing, that's the outer man. And, 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 and it's been eaten every day. It wasn't too long ago. We have a, I have an outer coat. It's the only one I've got. We pulled it out and apparently some moths ate some holes in it. All right. The fact is, my outer part of me, it, every day, you ever get up in the morning now and all of a sudden you hear the snap, crackle and pop? All of a sudden you feel the moans and the groans and all you're doing is trying to turn over. You know, we don't just jump out of bed like we used to. I'm reminded every day that the outer body is slowly deteriorating. All right. So what did Paul uh, say? He's trying to say, hey, and, and, and he wanted us to understand that every day that outer man is being destroyed by pain, by problems and burdens and trials. And, and every time we turn around, something else is being thrown at us. Uh, it's kind of like I always tell people, if everybody was a glass ball and we were juggling that, that's called relationships. If I let one of those glass balls hit the floor and break, it destroys that person. But so here I am trying to juggle all the things in life, trying to keep everybody motivated, trying to keep going. And I'm going, Lord, I don't know if I can keep this up. Then somebody lights a basketball on fire, throws it to me. And I'm saying, now what am I supposed to do with this, right? And if I'm not careful, I could drop what matters. The thing is to get rid of the basketball that's on fire, all right? So what do you do? You've got, you've got to learn to let go of some things. You've got to learn to turn loose some things, but don't lose heart, right? And there are two sources why we lose heart. Number one is the fallen nature. The whole natural world is under the curse of God because of sin. The world is under the curse of, of, of the futility and the pain, the suffering, the corruption and death. Romans chapter 8, verse 22 through 30, I'm sorry, verse 22 through 23 of Romans chapter 8. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, uh, which have the first fruits of the capital letter S, the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wish or to wit the redemption of our body. So just to remind you, uh, God saves his children in different stages. Now, I'm not talking about salvation now. Don't misunderstand me. I believe based on the word of God that once you're saved, you are sealed and your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And, and that we're, we're going to the day we are our last breath because we have our, our name written in the Lamb's book of life by the blood of the Lamb, that we're going to go to heaven. But I believe that God does save us in different stages in the physical realm, all right? Uh, I, I, so please don't misunderstand that. But the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. I believe that we are forgiven and that we are justified because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. How do you have proof? There's an empty tomb. Uh, there's, there's proof that, that whenever you trust Him as your Savior, you wouldn't trust Him as your Savior if you didn't think He wasn't real. And so when we come to Him in faith and we come to Him in repentance, He eternally saves us from the penalty of our sins. What does that mean? We're not, not, not to set us free. Uh, there, there's two things He doesn't set us free from. One is corruption of the outer flesh. Every day, Paul said, I have to beat my body into subjection. Number two, and that's death. There are two things that you and I are going to have to understand that's part of our life. That there's corruption all around us and it's going to affect us. And so the only way to overcome that flesh is to be able to renew the inward man every day. Uh, we will waste away and we will die if we don't. So we might die of old age. We might slip out into eternity when you fall asleep tonight. We might die as a child or a young adult. We might have a sudden heart attack. You might have cancer. You might even waste slowly away. You might be consumed with Alzheimer's. Hey, listen, you could have a car wreck, struck by lightning and everything else and all the 10,000 away that you could die. But the fact is the outer man is perishing. We're all going to die. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 reminds us we have this treasure in what? Earthly vessels. Did you get that? We have this treasure in earthly vessels. That is, we all live our days uh, like a fragile jar of clay. All right? One day the vessel will crack. It will break. And it will fade away. That's the nature of life. 
once you're born, you live for a certain amount of time and then you die, right? So the outer man is perishing, it's dying, it's rotting, it's broken, it's ruined. And, and, and this process, that flesh will never ever bring you to, to where you can get through the day because it can't. It's rotting, it's not. But the inward man is from Jesus Christ, all right? So fallen man, that would be the second reason. We talked about uh, uh, the, the fallen nature. Now we talk about the fallen man, right? Why is that important? Another element in the world that calls us to lose heart is other people. I can pause on that until everybody starts typing in amen. <laughs> All right? So it, it, if this fa fallen nature doesn't get you, then the fallen people will. All right? So the foolishness of the fallen man causes that person maybe to, to go out and get drunk, drive a car, and they kill themselves or somebody else. The fallen nature leads uh, fallen people to strap bombs on their bodies and walk uh, uh, on the city buses and kill people. That fallen man, uh, the fallen nature causes terrorists to go into shopping malls and, and destroy people. Uh, fallen people, they, they let us down. Fallen people hurt our feelings. Fallen people, they fail the Lord. Fallen people, they hurt us physically, verbally, emotionally, spiritually, and they cause us to do what? Lose heart. So Paul's experience, back in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10, he says, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about the body of the, of the, of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that in life also of Jesus might be made manifest, look at this, in our body. So then death worketh in us, he said. So it, it's our experience too. I believe it's easy to lose heart when life lets you down, when people are, are, have turned against you and, and your circumstances haven't worked out the way you want them to. It's easy to get to a place where you just want to quit. So what, but you don't have to. Did you know that? You don't have to give up. You don't have to become a statistic. You don't have to be one of those people who used to walk with God. One of those people who used to sing songs with God. You don't have to uh, be one of those people who used to go to church. One of those that used to serve the Lord. One of those that used to be faithful. You can reach a place in your life where you don't lose heart. So we talked about an incredible statement. A familiar struggle. But here's the wonderful secret. Let's go back to our Bible. All right. This is so, so important. All right. Verse 16. For, for which cause we faint not, but through our outward man, per or though our outward man perish, yet the inward man, here it is, is renewed day by day. Did you get that? So let me ask you, are you discouraged? How much time have you spent in the Word of God, reading it and learning it and loving Him and, and spending time with Him? Why, well, verse 16 says we are given a fresh strength for every day. You say, I don't have the strength to get through tomorrow. Well, then get through today. Get through today, all right? So Paul reminds us about the outward man that's perishing, but the inward man was being drained. But you can renew that. You can charge it up. So the natural man includes the body, and also that of the mind. The mind is dying. Hey, you've just been mentally exhausted. Every day, the mind and the body, they assault us by reminding us of the effects of sin and, 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 and about the sinners that are around us, right? And I'm talking about those that would do you harm. So the result is, it's a constant attack on the outward man. Every day we die a little. Every day we lose a step. Every day we experience heartbreak and sorrow and pain and problems and the, and the effects of the curse of the... I mean, what do you expect out of a sin-cursed world? I expect sinful things to come out of it, right? So, in other words, the world cannot offer to me what I need to renew myself. It's cursed, right? And we can all relate to that. But while the outward man grows weaker... And, and, and even nearer to the grave, the inner man can be renewed every day, day by day. Did you get that? To, to renovate, all right? So every day the inner man is given new strength uh, to face the trials. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 6, Lady Karen, verse 34. 
Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So in other words, he says, you, you can't control all of that. He would, but you need to focus on today. Take no thought about tomorrow. He's not saying just put your head in the sand. He says, don't let that wear you out. So while every day brings this unique problems, every day also comes with its own measure of grace. Write that down. Measure of grace from the hands of the Heavenly Father. Look what he says in Lamentations chapter 3. We've got to close this down. Lamentations uh, chapter 3, verse 21 through 26. He says, This I recall to my mind, therefore, ha therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because of His compassion we fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. And he says this, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. I put my trust in him. The Lord is good unto me that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. There's the key. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And so as our as in our days, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 25, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. Do you get that? Your days. So if you will tr do something spiritually, something mentally with the Word of God and the presence of God every day, if you will do that, it will strengthen you. Most people today don't have the strength, but they forget that, that Jesus talks about being a fountain, a fountain in which we drink of every day. And he says, he told the lady at the well, he said, when you drink of this water, you will thirst. But if you drink of the water that I give, you'll never thirst again. So once again, Matthew 6, 34 says, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What does it mean? It means, listen, why would I not tap into the grace of God for today, for the moment that I'm going through, right? So the car of your life is not, was not meant to run on yesterday's gas. Let me say it again. The car of your life that you're living in right now, that you drive right now, was not meant to run on yesterday's gas. You need to fill it up, what? Every day. Your spiritual metabolism cannot survive on yesterday's meals or sermons. You need to eat fresh fish every day. You need to drink water every day. So the spiritual doses that brought healing to your heart yesterday, uh, it won't help you with your symptoms today. You've done used that up. You need a fresh dose uh, to take care of your ailments today. Uh, my wife, it's funny, we were getting ready to come over here to the church and it's a cold night and a lot of people didn't show up and, and uh, there are people watching here that, uh, that I hope you'll like and share this with others and give them some hope out there. And uh, she looked at me and she says, hey, you, you need an ibuprofen? Because she knows I'm in pain tonight with this cold weather, right? So, uh, you know, sometimes we, we don't understand that we're going to have pain every day. And I had a choice to either take it or not take it. And you say, what if you don't take it? Well, you're just going to hurt all night long, right? So what are you going to do? I'm going to take an ibuprofen when I get home, all right? So God says, I'm going to give you a formula so that you don't have to lose hope. It's up to you if you want to take it. You can refuse it if you like. But no spiritual fuel was designed to run your car for 10 years. Did you get what I'm saying? No spiritual fuel was designed to run your car, which is you, all right, for 10 years. The single spiritual meal will power you, you think, for months at a time. But it's not. That's why we go to church every week. That's why we assemble on Wednesdays. That's why we open our Bibles every day. That's why we pray every day. Because the spiritual fuel that was designed to run you was not designed to run you for 10 years. It was for that moment in time. So you got to refill up your spiritual gas tank, right? And there's no spiritual inoculation with a cure that, to all of your ailments every new day. Why? Because every day you're going to find something that's out of whack, something that hurts, right? And so think about this. The inner man is what? Renewed, what did he say? Day by day. 
He's renewed fresh, a fresh fuel by fresh food, by fresh medicine, right? All right. So what does that mean? It means you need to feed on the Word of God every day. You need to pray to the Father every day. You need to have fellowship with the saints of God every day. You say, well, I don't really see anybody at church till I go to church. Hey, listen, we have cell phones. We've got duos. We've got all kinds of ways to communicate. Listen, pick up the phone. Going to church, uh, I wish people get this, but going to church once a week or once a month will not get the job done. Spiritually, just won't do it. All right? You need a fresh start every day. I suggest you start in Proverbs and you start with Proverbs chapter 1 and then read that today. And then you, and that's like, what, 31 chapters there? At the end of the month, you've read them all. You know, Proverbs is a great way to start your day. So, so same way here. Just be, the sermon that you heard even tonight, you, you, it's going to get you through to, to, to now, but you don't have a lot going on between now and Sunday. You're going to need a, whew, a breath of fresh air. You're going to need a new start. You're going to need to be renewed. You've got to renew that inner man every day by day. And so what do we do? If we don't feed our bodies, our bodies perish. Same thing here. If we don't put gas in our car and do an oil change, it's going to begin to break down. And if we go to the doctor and he gives you some medicine to take care of your body and you refuse to take it, it's not going to help you, right? So we make no provision today uh, uh, for the inner man who must be renewed. What? Paul said it. Here's the key. You got to do it every day. Not every Sunday or maybe every other Sunday, but every day. So verses 17, 18, nothing we face in this life will last forever. Notice that carefully the language Paul uses here, he says, our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Our light affliction is but for a moment. Our problem is that we hear this, but we do not believe it. We, uh, what we believe is what we see. And what we believe is what we feel. And what we believe is, is the pressure that we're feeling. And, and, and we never think it's easy. We never hear a believer testify about their problems and say, oh, they're light. Oh, listen, losing a loved one to the grave, oh, it's, it's no big deal. You'll never hear that. The reason Paul says this is we can't, can't in reality, it's because we don't have the proper perspective. Now, that's the key as we close out. We need to get the proper perspective on some things, all right? So the psalmist said this way in Psalms 30, verse 5, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. You know, uh, I, I, I wish we had more time, but we don't. This is one of those that really needs to be done in, in probably two different sessions. But Paul closes out with this, and he says in verse 18, he says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So what we're going through, it's, it's to, the whole point of this is to mold you and mold me and shape you and shape me into something that gives God the glory. And that is to help us to be more Christ-like every day of our life. And our problems and trials can do that for us. They can help get our attention, you know. And so when cancer comes and it drains your life away, it's not meaningless. What? When your heart breaks and your dreams are shattered, it's not meaningless. What? When your loved one dies at the hands of a drunk driver, it's not meaningless. When the car fails mechanically and someone you love dies, it's not meaninglessly. And the pastor, when you struggle with problems in your ministry, it's not meaninglessly. All right? So regardless of all this, the reason why I tell you that is I'm a firm believer that Paul said in Romans 8, 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to what? To the glory that shall be revealed in us. So all the things I'm going through, all the things you're going through, it's helping you to become the man or the woman that God wants you to be. Think about that for a moment. You say, I can't see that. Well, no, that's what Paul said. He said, you're looking at the outside. God sees the heart. And he's looking at who, what you're becoming from the inward man. He's developing you to be like Christ. So remember back in verse 7, we're just earthly vessels. And he reminds us that, that we're going to be cracked. We're going to wear out. We're going to be discarded over time, this old body. So what do we do? We live in the truth. 
that Jesus Christ is who he said he was. He's the eternal God, our Savior. Uh, he's the creator. Uh, we're just a pilgrim and, and we're a stranger on this. We're just passing through down here. And, 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 and along the way, you become delusioned. You become uh, defeated and discouraged. But don't lose heart. Why? You've got to look to the other side. And there's going to come a day that we're going to stand in glory. And all the tough times, Lady Karen, that we have to go through and trying to keep a ministry running and going and making ourselves available, we're going to say, oh, that was nothing. When you see what God's got in store for us, we're not even going to think about this. We're, it's not even going to cross our mind ever again. When you stand in heaven in front of the Creator, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and all of the saints of God, you don't give it one thought about what you went through on this earth. Does that make sense? He said that was the key, perspective. What we're going through is just temporary. We're gonna get through it with God's help and with each other, and we're gonna, we're gonna let God develop us so that the glory that shall be what? Revealed in us. I hope and pray that somebody might say, you know, Pastor Rick, you know, you remind me of what the Bible calls one of those Christians, one of those Christ-like people. Boy, wouldn't that be great? Most people don't quite see me that way most of the time. But I would love that. If somebody said there's enough evidence in you, of Christ in you, that you remind me of someone who is a follower of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a glory that would be. Father, I pray that, Lord, that we just won't lose hope. That we understand there's the key to renew the inner man every day. Nobody can do it for us. Pastor can't do it for you. Mom and dad can't do it for you. Your mate can't do it for you. It's something you have to do. I want to renew this inner person. I want to wake up in the morning and I want to read your word. I want to pray to you. I want to lift up my heart to you and put my faith in you that your grace is sufficient for today and that we're going to make it through. And then tomorrow and the next day, Lord, you're sufficient. Lord, I trust in you. Lord, for be one here that doesn't know you as Savior, I pray like the thief on the cross, they would say, hey, I'm guilty, and I believe that you are the Christ, that you are God's Son, that you are hanging on the cross, paying for my sin debt. So I'm going to ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Give me a home in heaven with you. And Jesus, you turned to, that, uh, to the thief and said, today thou wilt be with me in paradise. The same Jesus I trusted in to save me, is the same Jesus I trust in to give me the grace and the guidance that I need to try to be a blessing in this life. I love you. Hugs and kisses in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. Don't lose hope. God bless you. Bye-bye.